What's going on and welcome to the Stick Drift Podcast, a podcast for all things cars, racing games, motorsports and more. Oh, we are on about... This is basically um, just a motorfest exclusive. Not entirely. Welcome back to the Stick Drift Podcast. Yeah, where... nothing's laid out right at the minute, so uh, <laughs> you, you have a waffle quick. We're just gonna, we're just gonna goddamn free run it, you know. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna go on a bit. Tell you what, there's as if the others are just free run as well, but you know. <laughs> you know what? Normally we have like a like a couple minutes before where we're like, right, what's even going on in the in the world of motorsports? But it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty obvious uh, recently because it's the motorfest. Got a brand new update, which we got early access to. I got early access to, and you are also able to talk about. Uh, we also have a a lot of F1 drama, which, to be fair, that one that one might make up a big chunk of this. Um, not a lot of car news, though, I will say. <laughs> Nothing relevant. Did we talk about the Jaguar stuff last week? I don't think we did. I honestly have no idea. Jaguar stuff? Uh, you know what? I'll send it, and I'll just act like we haven't talked about it. Also, the rather... SUV only thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, because we didn't talk about the new Challenger either. Oh, there Challenger. you go. Oh, surely that was out by last week. How long are these weeks? You would have made it thumbnail, then, bitch. If... Oh yeah, yeah. I guess, I guess, I would have. I guess because it would have been the only new car that week. So. Yeah, I suppose, right? <laughs> well, welcome back to this episode of the Stick Drift Podcast. And right at the top, I'd like to remind everyone to head down there, leave a like on the podcast, and share the podcast with your friends. Let them know. Let them know there's a there's a hot new uh, 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 podcast with 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 uh, all about cars, car culture, racing, racing games, and motorsports, as well as I'd like to also announce that we're getting a Black Panther guest episode. Um, Two Black Panther guest episodes. Uh, yeah. Because I recorded with him and we ended up going for four hours. <laughs> gonna get DLC. He's gonna get part one and part two. Yeah. And tell you what, if members were set up, they'd get it all early, but thus it isn't. Um, but it's it's a weird one because when we talked, it was like the second half that was really about cars and racing games and uh, anything upcoming in the crew and anything upcoming in um for him and i guess uh, that kind of stuff and need for speed it was the beginning where we just sort of had a big old chat so it's kind of gonna go up the wrong way around <laughs> the second <laughs> part is gonna go up first and the first part is gonna go up second there's only like two points where we go like we mentioned at the beginning so you should be fine um and you know the first part's more relevant black panther from motorfest is yeah. indeed yeah. Uh, coming on the podcast. Um, Black Panther, who reprises his role as himself uh, <laughs> on this podcast. Um, damn, I should have used that one. I didn't. That was pretty good. Reprising his role as himself. Uh, you know what? <laughs> yeah. We'll talk about that in a bit. But first and foremost, we have at the top of the news hour, uh, Jaguar, yeah. Let's talk about the nonsense that is Jaguar. Jaguar... You you know what? Let the let the viewers know what we thought was happening with Jaguar before this bit of news because we've well, talked about them before. They were meant to be going up market specifically aiming at Bentley sort of area, and I guess being owned by Land Rover is the move makes sense towards bigger vehicles because they can share platforms that way. They don't have to develop a new specific F type platform. A new what was the sedan called you have the f type the... <laughs> don't remember like the xj or sure. whatever it's called that sounds days. about yeah. right yeah yeah they don't have to develop new platforms for those when they can just go oh we've got four different suv platforms here's another one <laughs> <laughs> yep and, and now they're uh, going suv only yeah so before they were gonna go to like rolls royce bentley competitors bentley rolls royce isn't a Bentley. right yes but a yeah. bentley and BMW i6 competitor, I guess. Maserati what? and Alfa Romeo are kind of up there, aren't they? Really? I suppose, yeah, yeah. Depending on depending on which Alfa Romeo you're talking about, really. You could buy a really bright base model Alfa, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They go high end. Yeah, Maserati. Do Maserati not do supercar? That's where. They... Oh, they do have an SUV. I always forget Maserati the do an SUV. Oh, wow. Yeah, you got the best Maserati that ever disgusting. made. Disgusting. <laughs> what? Uh, but. The Jaguar, Jaguar the company, is instead switching to SUV only. And I it think... It makes sense. It makes yeah. sense. They need to cut costs somehow. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why... And I imagine 
the SUVs are the well, the SUVs are the only cars that there's I really see about in any yeah. real quantity apart from the F Type. So Theo, Black Panther, I'm spoiling the episode here, he brought up a good point about this. So I talked to him about this and he mentioned that um it kind of is bad because Jaguar, Land Rover, and what was it, Range Rover, JLR, something like that, he mentioned. Yeah. Um, those are sold in the same dealership normally, right? If not, it'll yeah. be two at least. Um, in I the same dealership. That, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you get Jaguar, Land Rover dealerships. If you're going to a dealership, he, I forget the specific numbers, but it was like cheapest Jaguar SUV, he said was like maybe, I, I forget, like 60K, right? And then he mentioned the. Um, yeah. Lat- yeah, yeah, the, the cheapest, like, new sell I forget Jaguar. they don't do. Like, they used to do, like, £40,000 yep. ones. They don't anymore. They well, don't. Speaking of 40000 Range Rover Evoque, £40,000 SUV. Yeah. Good point he brought up. If you're buying an SUV under whatever context, you're a, you're a parent, you're a whatever, you just want, like, a flashy SUV that isn't a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, and you go into this dealership. Why on earth are you going to buy a Jaguar SUV instead of buying a... Sure, maybe these £40... £40... £40 pound, £40 pound pound would be one. a bargain. Right? Uh, sure, maybe these £40,000 ones, the ones you see everywhere, clearly they don't do those anymore. But the, uh, why on earth would you buy a Jaguar SUV if they do not make a cheaper option over a Range G- Rover? Jaguar was surviving off brand legacy only. And Why would you the... buy a Jack sedan? Oh, no, exactly, right. exactly. Like the there was is... no point. Like They'd they already, never like... made sense mm. financially. Yeah, they're just oh, it's a Jaguar. They have brand. Mm. They it's like iPhone, the but to a lot less degree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the iPhone, but it's about twenty years out of date. Exactly, exactly. Like brand loyalty. You know, you get a Jaguar because you're seventy years old and you, you and you remember the E Type, right? Like that's why you get a that's why you get a Jaguar. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. They, they, this this is this is it this is it though because those people are gonna be are gonna be slowly and shortly dying out. Unfortunately, X E was the sedan. They and they're thirty two thousand pound. Yeah, well they're not doing that anymore. So doubling in price, rough. Uh, Jaguar. Uh, it's Jaguar, not rough. Uh huh. You said rough. It's Jaguar. Oh, terrible. Absolutely terrible. Take that back right now. No, um, I think I will. But the... <laughs> um, you've lost my train of thought as well. I'm sorry <laughs> for that one. That one is outrageous. <laughs> Take that back. Ah, oh, da- damn it. Um, Jaguar used to have legacy, right? They used to have a heritage. Then you got the F-Type. Maybe there's some people who like the F-Type and are future car buyers. And the F-Type, them. for the price, yeah. it was kind of cool. Yeah, no, no, no. F-Type was a good car. They had a, a Jaguar uh, wagon as well. A Jaguar. Yeah, it well. was the wagon version of the... Uh, what did I just right? say the name was? Oh, the XE? XE, that's the yeah. one. Uh, but now, now that they're doing this, at the very point in time that they're doing this, their legacy is rubbish sedans. <laughs> like, that's their yep. legacy. Like, when they were doing the legacy... Sed- when they were doing the rubbish sedans, their legacy was the E-Type. But obviously... As time shuffles on, everything's going to go forward one. And now their legacy isn't the E-Type anymore. It's that. And there's no reason to buy this other than a Range Rover. Sure, there's a Jaguar badge, but why not buy a Range Rover? <laughs> go on. Yeah, I've, no, I've got no comment on that apart from go. it's just... I don't see how either brand really exists. And that was, a teaser for, uh, that was a teaser for the Black Panther episode upcoming. Uh, probably like Thursday for those uh, on on the on the day uh, watches the Sick Drift podcast. Yeah, this is gonna do nothing. Uh, maybe it works for them. May well, like they're owned by someone, right? So maybe it works mm. for them. Uh, do they own or are they owned? They is are it? owned. Okay, I thought so. They've yeah. been in the bin for a while. <laughs> but I I don't see like there's no real brand appeal to them anymore. No, no. No cheap sedan. No sports car. Jaguar and... is now an SUV production plant, and that is it. Oh, they also make that ugly one that looks like the concept car. This thing. This disgusting SUV. Oh, the EV, yeah. Yeah, which is supposed to look like the... Um, the what, what? It's like an SUV version of the concept that they have. I forget it's, what its I, name is. I, it just got a very angular back. 
and the front. The front is like ripped right off of that thing. The the hood and the the lights and the grill. The front Obviously, looks the the rear looks really odd when you're following one in person. I just think it's Not a really a bad looking car. It, it looks yeah. like that uh, that um, concept car, but as an ugly SUV. It's like the Ferrari SUV of that concept car, really. Um, and that stinks. That absolutely stinks. Um, but speaking of stinky, there's probably other stuff going on in uh, the car world, but I've, I've forgotten at the point of um, talking about it right now. New. Who's doing a new? Dodge. Dodge. Challenger. Electric. Charger. Oh, God, yes. I believe it's, it's. I don't a, know which one it is. It's, it's a challenger, but it looks like a charger. Dodge. Again, one's four door, one's two door, but they're now both two door and one four door variant. If you buy well, them, they're just one car now. <laughs> challenger <laughs> EV. So they cancelled the big line on the front circle headlights Dodge. They cancel the X on the front one with the red eye charger, and instead hits back, looking. Like this monstrosity. They've revealed it, and it looks so much more bland yeah. than its concept. Yeah, but then again, I don't even think it looks too different from its concept, actually. Maybe I'm just realizing that it sucks. <laughs> Maybe that's what's happening here. It, it's got some things different, some curves. It curves do, in. Do you want to guess the range and the weight? Oh, it's a fun God. game. Weight three tons. <laughs> you aren't far off 2.6. <laughs> Range? Oh, tell me it starts with a two at least. It does. It starts with okay. a two. Okay. 230. I'm lowballing. Far off. I'd say. 260. Okay. Doesn't the Renault... Have more? The, uh, Renault? the Renault has about the same range okay, with a battery okay. pack quarter of the size. <laughs> 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 because oh. it is an, an in aerodynamic boat that so, weighs 2.6 tons. So it's got less battery but more range. Yeah, quarter, yeah. quarter of the size of the battery and about the same range. That's insane. So this should, uh, could, sorry, have like four times that range. But It's too heavy. It's, yeah, it's the same issue with the Taken, where it's got a massive battery pack, but because it's 2.3 tons, it's just... See, you can't... Is... It just takes a lot of power to move something that way. <laughs> this is where synthetic fuel makes a lot more sense. This is where where anything else, hydrogen, synthetic fuel, just something else makes way, way more sense than an EV, especially with the... Insane turnover. You Guess what the top the speed is? 600, uh, 670 horsepower, right? So... Sure, that sounds what's like a What's What's a basis? I could... Dylan's 350. Yeah. Double the power and add 15%. Damn. I would say... What do you reckon the top speed is? Bear in mind the 350 can do 155. I would say... I'd hope at least 185 to 200 with uh, that kind of jump. Try 137 for the top trim. Wait, so it's slower than the 350 top speed? Yeah. <laughs> it's slower than a 2010 Astro VXR. So the, moment, so the moment a drag race gets more than, what, a quarter mile? Oh, You're you, losing. You get walked by basically any other car in production <laughs> today. Well, I assume it has launch, because that's what electric cars have, right? I'd hope About, it has launch. Huh? Uh, what's the... Zero to 60. Base, it... base trim, 0 to 60, 4.4. That doesn't sound Three... quick. No, not really. Not comparatively. Not, for Maybe an not... EV, not great. Okay, yeah, yeah. Top trim, 3.3, which isn't terrible. But then again, you've got no top speed. Yeah. I love how, I suppose, an attempt at aerodynamics is the fact that the front line for the lights is a hole that goes over the hood now. They've tried... <laughs> Yeah, they've they've. It tried. has no top speed. I don't know how. Like, it, it's just a brick. <laughs> this is a brick without any of the justifications for a brick. Because you know what the justification for a brick used to be? Mm. Now the justification for a brick is. The issue is it makes power. Like it makes six hundred and seventy horsepower, but it it just it it just doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> it doesn't. No. Uh, it's all wheel is... drive only as well, which is kind of cool. yeah. Here's the uh, here's the sound of this thing for anyone who uh, who wants to hear the sound of it. It's playing for the audio yeah, listeners right now, it. and it's a it's a red one and odd for one starts yeah, that's off. That's pretty cool, huh? 
I'll imagine it's cool. An incredibly odd sound. At about like 40 seconds uh, is where he revs it. But this it... will go down as one of the biggest flops of all time. Uh, do I you guarantee. reckon no one's buying this? What is the uh, target market for the original one? For the what? Well, I say original. It's... The one that was out for the past 10 years. Yeah, it, well, it's a, it's a, it's a, oh, my Dodge Charger. Oh, howdy, it has no range. Yeah. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. You can't drive anywhere. In America, you can't drive this anywhere. You wouldn't want it in a city either, I doubt. Like, they in... are making petrol ones. Yeah. Oh, but oh, yeah. they're on okay. the same chassis, which is going to be so it's going to so look odd. the same, basically. Yeah, same car, but it's going to be a petrol version. But I don't get how they're going to do that because the weight distribution is going to be set up for a uh, like four hundred kilo battery pack to be under the floor. Yeah. Without that, surely it's going to be really <laughs> odd. Yeah. And but... I get the petrol one will be quicker. It might not be oh, as quick yeah. to zero to sixty. But it will be quicker top speed wise by a I mile. I assume range will be it's... better as well, by by yeah. far. Hopefully. It's using the same engine as the Jeep Avenger, the new oh. Stellantis twin turbo in line six makes like five sixty horsepower. A... But yeah, they haven't announced pricing or anything for any edition, which makes me think this is going to be fifty thousand pound plus. <laughs> One thing is though, a Dodge. With a with what a, a what a a Jeep engine that sounds embarrassing. If I was a Dodge fan, surely that's the biggest and easiest. I insult mean, Stray ever. Six is just synonymous with with base trim, really, for a long time. Is that what like, it is? Okay, so would a would a higher spec of this petrol version have a better engine? No, the engine? top the top spec is is in line six now. Oh, okay. Well, then rip, I guess. Yeah. Isn't, isn't V eight? Isn't V8 a muscle car thing? Was that never yeah, a muscle yeah. car it thing? Yeah, it usually is. The way it used to be is inline six was sort of, which is ages ago. Inline six was sort of the base level everyday driving trim. Then you got the yeah. V8 for the performance. It then switched to V6 for base trim, uh, V8 for the top trim. Then it had like an inline four, a V6, then a V8. But now you can only buy the petrol one in an inline six. Yeah. Here's one thing though. I genuinely think they may be doing a petrol version, right? I think that that thing is also not going to be bought by anyone for the sole reason that it looks like the EV one. And it would be embarrassing. Because imagine imagine being the American buyer that wants a Dodge. You forgot how much they differentiated the, the non. What was it? Challenger Charger? Yeah. How much they differentiated those between trims when they were current. <sighs> like, you can spot, oh, that's that specific version. They sure, will give sure. the petrol one hood scoops and, like, I don't okay. know, different if fender flares. That, if it they will. That's does. what they do. They need good, to get people to good. buy these. <laughs> all right. Then it'd be all right. If they did that, sold it with, like, I don't know, whatever on it as well, then sure. If it just looks like this, no one's buying that because they don't want to be confused for someone who bought the EV. And again, it's going to have to look fairly different. Because this is the only one that's gotten publicity. I didn't know that they were doing a petrol. You know, you got, you got to... No, you they don't want to sell the petrol, I don't think. Is what's exactly. going on. They're kind of like, oh, I guess if we want to sell a number of these, we have to kind of sell the petrol one. Exactly, right? So I just feel like because they've not marketed the petrol one at all... Well, it don't like, come out until twenty late 25, I don't think. Well, when, when does this one come out? Soon? Sooner? How many is a 2024 model year car? But it's, oh, there you go. What, okay. March? I will say... <laughs> So one thing you pointed out originally, this thing slopes down on the front a lot more than the old Dodge used to of this design. It I've also... gone back on what I said why that was, by the okay. way. I think this is just any attempt at equal range out of the thing. They're trying to make it somewhat aerodynamic. Sure, <laughs> but the other thing you pointed out was that it has indicator lights on the side at the front, which... You would only have to do if you were selling a car within the EU regulations. I don't know if you do. I've seen American cars with them now. I, I think aren't those the only ones that aren't those only the ones that do the whatever? I'm not really sure. I reckon they will try and sell these in the EU. It has a yeah. very pedestrian safety sloped hood. It has side markers in a very EU position. Right. I just don't think it's going to sell very well. It's 2.6 tons. <laughs> sure, no, no, no. It, it won't sell well. But I'm just saying that it probably will come to the EU. Meaning this will be the first Dodge Challenger Charger or whatever we've gotten in 
a very long time, I want to say. You can buy UK spec oh. current, uh, like Hellcats and stuff. Are they UK spec? Or are they They're UK... not, they, they don't show up as imported. They are UK oh. spec. Never mind. Then there I is an official right. Dodge dealer in the UK that sells Hellcats. And like, yeah, all right. No one's, all no, one's buy, no one's buying this then. No They're £100,000, no one... pound, but yeah, oh, sure. you can yeah, buy them. No, no one's buying this then. No, yeah, if you can buy, if you can buy that, why, why buy this? Why? Why? <laughs> there's, there's no reason. There's no need. Huh. I, I can't see this selling very well. I think they're going to fast track the combustion versions through. Yeah. I mean, the thing with the, like, the people buy these because oh, cool car sound, vroom, vroom, and then speed. This yeah. has neither of those selling factors with Stellantis build quality. Yeah, yeah. And a These engine. inline sixes will be blowing up left, right, and center, <laughs> by the way. I guarantee it. Yeah. Like, they have, like, twin turbos, but the turbos are in the side of the engine, and... The, like the top of the blocks integrated as part of the exhaust system, and you got like an intercooler built into the block. It's just why <laughs> this is going to cost eight billion pounds if it the wind blows the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, and that is rough. Uh, but what I will say is, before we move on to some of the other topics, I saw you put an article in our in our in our news thing. It's rather funny. It's a uh... <laughs> it's an exclusive render from car wow it's <laughs> it's it may have uh, the same three liter v6 from the cayenne s yeah and, I, that's the only reason for it yep, is, oh, yep. car wow. <laughs> and, and 520 horsepower possible <laughs> plus possible but oh sorry plus possible what on earth are car wow <laughs> They so we, clickbait to the next level. Yeah, so we've talked about Carwell before on the podcast. This is what they do. <laughs> It'll be a render of a car that they'll call exclusive. It'll then be... Which, by the Guarantee way, this looks see the RS6 is on its way out, though. Ah, it'll come back EV, though. It'll come back in the e-tron line. Uh, yeah, but they'll call it the e-tron GT Sportback or your e-tron yeah. Avant or something. I don't know why they're calling all those cars e-tron. It's so dumb. Now, now they're just not differentiated at all. Because, like, you search e-tron and it could come up with a sedan or the SUV. They want to change it to sure. yeah. even numbers petrol, odd numbers EV, or the other way around. I don't know which way they said they wanted to do it, but one of those ways. Yeah. But, uh, so but they why? Does that mean they're renaming <laughs> the... Does that mean they're renaming the e-tron and renaming no, everything? No, I think the e-tron is like a, ty like a Taycan. It's like premium tier. Oh, okay, sure. But what about the SUVs and whatnot? And the SUV wagon. Because they, they have an EV crossover, don't they? The E... EQ... Oh, I don't know. EQS. Where is Auto Trader? EQ. Uh, no. Sure. E Audi EV SUV. What I would assume is... EQ8. EQ8. Oh, okay, so I guess what? So it's uh, even yeah. numbers. Uh, EV, yeah. So this will probably become like, what, EQ6, I guess, or something like that? Yeah, eventually. it'll be like the... I think Q is for... A big, so it'll be the oh, okay. the E S. I don't know E E R E E R. No, the emergency response. The E X. Summit. Summit. Who cares? Who cares? All right. Screw them. Um, bad and also car wow. Bad. <laughs> car wow. You know, I, I don't know what they're calling their sedans. They haven't got one out yet, but yeah. There you go. Um, sloped bonnet, huge air intakes, light bar, and centralized exhaust. I mean, they, they what they're just sort of saying there is it'll look like the e-tron but a wagon, really. Um, and that's kind of bad because the e-tron is... What's this for the RS5? The RS6. Oh, is it an RS6? No, it's an RS5. Yeah, sorry. You know what I'm saying? This RS5 is, I guarantee, is to replace the RS6. Yeah, it yeah. makes mm. 100 horsepower less. It's going to weigh less. It's V6, not V8. It's yeah. 100%. Because there's no... I think they're going to struggle to get that V8 through Euro 7. Yeah. So they're going to go, oh, that's gone, mysteriously. <laughs> Here is an yeah. RS5. What? It's one number less, and it's a slightly smaller engine, so good enough. I kind of don't see him. I don't see him wanting to, to yeah, yeah. I, 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 I see them doing the replace. I don't, I don't see people accepting the RS5 the way they like the RS6 Avant. It would have to look a very certain way. Also, not EV then. No. Is that? Oh, okay. Eh. 
I don't know, the exclusive thing had a little electric symbol on it, so I just assumed. Carwow, well, I'm blaming you for that. Um, but there has been, Josh, an update to the Crew Motor Fest. Oh my god. For all the non-gaming viewers of the Stick Drift Podcast, what are we talking about? But for the gaming viewers of the Stick Drift Podcast, uh, the crew, which is um, unfortunately what I have built a living on, um, has an update. <laughs> And I got early access to it, and Josh is also signed on to be able to talk about that early access. And that is season three, and it's actually rather relevant to me in a certain way. I am technically canon in the Crew Motor Fest. Because Black Panther has collaborated with Motor Fest. Yes, he's, he's canon in the game, right? His channel is also featured. It's in the background, the knobheads, right? The knobheads is Corey Johnston. Corey Johnston has been on the Stick Drift podcast. Black Panther has done a collaboration with Sid Wadge. Black Panther is, in, is on the Stick Drift podcast. Sid Wadge is on the Stick Drift podcast. You are canon in the Crew Motorfest. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know if be, to be honest. <laughs> Stick Drift collaboration coming up with Motorfest soon come. Um, but... This is an update that has released called, um, I don't know. It doesn't really have a name, I don't think. Yeah, as far as I know, I, I, I genuinely don't know. I think it's just season three. It's like Hollywood action, and then it's got a bunch of other names for its have subsections. Have publicly confirmed anything for a name yet? Or? I don't think they I don't, I don't think they have. Oh, I think they just okay. call it season three. New season in Rick Motorfest, official, Rick Martinez, season three, available tomorrow. Don't miss out season three content. It's just called season oh, okay. three. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, very interesting. But it brings a brand new playlist. It brings a bunch of new cars. And it brings uh, a bunch of content creators, including Shmi, uh, Black Panther, Chris Forsberg, who content creator debatable, um, Stereo Online, and that dude in blue. The latter of which, not latter of which, I suppose that dude in blue and Shmi. As if this podcast reaches the audience it's intended to, those are the ones I'd, I'd assume you'd actually you got to get the key words out. Shmi. Uh, Shmi. Shmi. Hypercars. Lycan Hypersport. Zenvo. Lycan Fast Cars. Expensive uh, car. Very fast Zenvo. Expensive Bugatti. money. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so they are coming to the Crew Motor Fest along with a Hollywood-style playlist. I, th I suppose let's begin with that. This playlist, actually pretty good. This was actually, yeah. It was actually a pretty good playlist. Enjoyable so, to play, in my mm. opinion. Um, <sighs> I don't like were... the way of delivering content again, but that's oh sure, sure. But that's nothing on the content of the playlist. Specifically, the playlist. I, I thought the vehicle selection made sense. The way the playlist being delivered is technically part of the playlist. But... Oh yeah, well I'm I'm talking. Well no, well no, that no. That's yes. Like, no, well okay. If if you bought something off Amazon. And it arrived two days late, but the actual product was absolutely amazing. And I said, "What do you think of the product?" You I would go... be livid with the with the postage. Oh yeah, sure. But if I asked about the product, you wouldn't go. Bad postage would take away from my enjoyment of the product. See, and that is the kind of person you are. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but the the playlist, I, it had some fun events. There's one where you drive through a hotel. Um, that one was is pretty that... fun, huh? Is that? Yeah, yeah. There's a uh, there's the 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 nomad one. The the, the you drive you're racing a bunch of nomad. You haven't Remember played it. Remember how long it's been since I've played this? Yeah. yeah. So it follows a stunt driver hired by a fictional director Rick Martinez for a fictional film, Hollywood no high ride, based on a a a crook, a thief getting hired by a big gang, falling in love with gang leader's daughter, and then having to run away with her. Um, quite the story when I put it like that, I guess. I will say, the playlist had a lot of thought put into it as well. Like, the the format of the movie seems like it could actually be a, just a straight-up movie. <laughs> like, it... Like, yeah. I, I, yeah. It, it would be with, generic slop, but yeah. Yeah, obviously, but it starts with a... It starts with a... Just a chase. You're, you're doing it for yourself. Uh, what's his name? Terry. Terry Crews. Something like that. Terry Crews is a different guy. No, not Terry Crews. Terry, Terry something else. Something. Um, One of them. <laughs> um, so 
Uh, he seems like a self-insert as well of the director. But yeah, Terry is doing a big heist in his Mini Cooper. And he's, he's, he's running around doing whatever in a Mini. It begins with that, escaping from a whatever. There is cameras everywhere. It's supposed to be like you're filming. It's also got a brand new feature like uh, video lanes where timer runs out and you got to go on those to replenish the timer. That event, pretty good stop. The music in it, pretty good. Uh, we then move on to he, he gets hired. And then another really fun event. Um, you're in a Dodge Challenger or Charger, one of the old ones. And this time you're trialing out for being in the big gang. You, you jump in and you, and you race a race Mikey the Maniac uh, in, <laughs> his, in his blacked out Dodge. It, it was a dirt race with a bunch of stuff to smash because it has another new feature, Dirty Driving, where you get more money for doing more damage uh, instead of the other way around. That event, pretty good. It then goes... I'm still remembering it off the top. I will. I'm oh, fairly, I, you're lucky you are. <laughs> I'm fairly certain it's the bike event next, as far as I remember. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that one. Yeah, so the bike, you're then doing a heist, um, stealing from... Cockney British people, apparently. You're stealing from East Londoners. Um, to a multi-vehicle event as well. Yeah, so you begin in a little getaway in the Yamaha motocross, and then you end up in the highway, at which point you switch to a Ducati. Uh, then, God, does it, go, does it go slow after that? I think it then switches over to you take a drive, returning uh, feature pictures to lead you uh, which way to go yeah yeah you drive over to your mate keanu that one's in the ferrari 308 um this bit i just thought was nice uh, by the end because like the lore of a story right you're just visiting your mate and being like hey i've got a new job or whatever and then he comes back at the end like a movie <laughs> would it's um what, what what's the gun what's the gun the movie term about the gun there's someone's gun. Someone had a gun in a movie, and it's like, if a thing comes back in a film, it's a ref... I yeah, be. I'll take your word that exists. Some sure. movie buff knows what I'm talking about. Comment below. A comment, leave a comment below on which gun I'm talking about. <laughs> There's a, if something comes back in a movie later, it's a whatever. You know what? I'm going insane. Um, <laughs> there is... You go over to Keanu's house, then you do a big um, nomad race over a mountain and through a hotel. That one's a bit of fun. That one's just like... He was already racing. The lore of that is he was already racing, so you just sort of came on and did it with him. Then you do a big, a big heist. You do a big, a big, big jump and a big whatever through a big set that resets every time each third lap in the Shelby something old oh, Mustang. It's, it's the old GT five hundred. Oh, that's the one. Yeah, um, Boss Mustang yeah. Boss GT five hundred Shelby. I don't know thing. if it was the Boss. I think it's the was wide it one. Yeah, it's the it's the one that's like because the boss is thinned out, right? It's the it's the one that's really weirdly wide, I think. But yeah, yeah, you are right. Yeah, that thing. You then do a big a big all that. Then you're in a five fifty going over to meet your the the love of your life, who happens to be the boss's daughter. Oh, that's another picture event. And then finally, a he figures out because you know they they were rather subtle with this. I didn't even notice it. You drive past Mikey the Maniac at one point. I didn't even notice. What? Because the final event, you're in an Aston Martin, DBS getting away in a three-vehicle car boat plane. I forgot getaway. it was a live extreme, yeah. Yeah, get away, over, through stuff, uh, jumping. Big really scratching. good event. Yep. Um, also... Guns! You are being shot at during this event. They've got boats shooting at you in the plane section. Yeah, there's guns, there's uh, grenades. Uh, when you're in the boat section, there's depth charges. Or I guess it's either depth charges <laughs> mines. or what... Yeah, mines or the other boats are shooting at you. So I guess it would be sea to sea missiles or whatever. Um, and then in the plane section... There is ground, there's sea to air missiles and ground to air missiles. It's a great event, great yeah. event. Yeah, a mountain falls apart at one point. Like it genuinely was just such a bit of fun as an event, and that then the, the whole playlist just rounded out, actually being just fun. Like that's all it was. It was just enjoyable. Yeah, um, I would put it as my top two. It's within my top two playlists, which is this one 
and the, I would say the motorsports playlist was was, was the other one that I put up there. You have it. such a fond attraction to the I motorsports like it. playlist. I for like it. I like. I like. I hate it. I like going wheel. I like going first person. I like putting all assists on. Playing you like understeer. Yeah, exactly. I like that. I gotta actually counter it. I gotta drive well. I love that. That playlist is a good playlist. All right. Mm, um, if you say so. Go. Where would you rank this playlist amongst the others? Would you say it is the best? The issue is I have such a bias against all the other playlists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think there's a single good playlist in game. Uh. Well, it's the best playlist in game by far. Yeah. Okay. There you but, go. I mean. <laughs> I will say it had, uh, had to, it had a banger soundtrack. But that as might well. just be my recency bias. Sure. Like it would be every other playlist. Oh, I've got a green. Every other oh. playlist in game. High rise. Yeah. Thing. Um, but it had a banger soundtrack as well. Some highlights were definitely uh, too much, too young, too fast. Uh, Son of a preacher man. Uh, other ones, uh, there, there was some just like generic actiony stuff. Uh, dive hard. The cave race. Dive Hard's a banger. <laughs> Wasn't Dive Hard just like... It's just rock, Oh, no. It? Surely it's a reference to Die Hard, the film. Oh, yes, for sure. I suppose so. <laughs> it's a banger, though. Um, I don't know I what like... the song is, but the name's a banger. <laughs> Son of a Preacher Man was good, because that, that's a Luke Cage song. Um, Son of a Preacher Man. Uh, I, that's I watched... the only reason you like that one. I Because I, I watched it... Re I only realised that recently, because I watched Luke Cage recently, and I was like, oh, wait, hang on a minute. This song is from the playlist. Um, Life Crash, uh, Shapeless Shadow, Trapped in Confusion, uh, A Chosen Soldier, The Rockefeller Skank, <laughs> uh, by Fatboy Slim. I feel like that was a good one. Is that the one I'm thinking of? I don't know what Too Much Too Young Too Fast is, actually. I think it's The Rockefeller Skank is the one that I really liked. It's whatever's in that first event. That one's really good. Yeah, yeah. I know what yeah. you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think out of ten... I, I want to give it a 10. I just don't think... No playlist, playlist can be a 10 with, yeah. a delivery there, with the delivery of these updates at the minute. I, well, what would you change eight and a half. about it? What, what, would you, what would you change about it? What is... What is the game? What, uh... What's the format of the delivery that's wrong, I suppose? Because in my head, my only issue with the delivery is that there needs to be one a month. But that wouldn't exactly affect the playlist specifically. Is that if think they release all the events at once, they need to be playlist a month. At least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if they aren't, well, they aren't going to do yeah. that. They need to do something in in between of what they did in the crew. Like not, um, not you can't release one event every two weeks. That's yeah. outrageous. Yeah. Maybe an event every three days, every like every three to five days, something like that. I don't know. They could do it across the days of the first week, right? Like, there's yeah. always... A Just so is the average, it so. isn't all at once. So yeah. you have a reason to load up the game any other day other than the day the update comes <laughs> yeah. out. So that's one of the big issues that I'm going to get onto. Uh, not even to do with the playlist, that. But that's a big issue uh, moving forward through this uh, playlist... Through this update, sorry. Uh, but yeah, playlist all in all, I'd give it a 9. Um, I'm disregarding the, uh, the actual delivery of it. I'd say just the well, playlist. It's a bit, a bit unfair because the delivery of the playlist is a major part in uh, no, how no, it plays. No. I'm saying within that experience, just if you take not the time I played it, I'm saying just the, within that time frame. You know what? Hawaii Scenic Tour is pretty good, and I have no bias for that. It's... Hawaii Scenic Tour is pretty nice. You know, you get to learn about Hawaii and a guy telling you stories. playlist I will never replay. <laughs> that's Ocean and Sky... I don't know, I, I, I don't see you playing a lot of them again. <laughs> Some of the off-road events are stinky. Sure, Dream Cars is pretty... Uh, oh, yeah, Dream Cars, a Lamborghini playlist. Vintage Garage. I like Vintage Garage, that's a good one. Oh, right. Well, you said off-road event. That has some off-road events. Um, yeah, but that has off-road events in normal cars, not in boats. As a, oh, yeah, sure, no, I suppose so. Uh, the off-road playlist as well, Porsche playlist. Um, something. Porsche playlist, I don't think it's the worst. Hoonigan as well. Forgot that was in the game. There you go. The Drift Playlist. Drift Playlist 2. Oh, I can't wait to replay Drift Playlist 2. I can't wait for Drift Playlist 3, frankly. Um... When are we going to get Ocean and Sky 2? Exactly. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'd say uh, top two playlist, and I would say pretty damn good. Um, Could have done better, though. Someone did mention um, 
could have they could have done a bunch of other stuff like having a car a camera car follow you the coding would have been weird and it could have been buggy for sure but the a poor camera... game engine would explode yeah a camera car following you sure but yeah I, uh, there is cameras everywhere else in the in the events i do understand that though it could have been done and um actual people chasing you instead of people just like drifting in but i was like yeah it's it's a movie right that's just about... because they were using crew two yeah yeah the crew twos had things where people drive in and and um slide and stuff well right? one of them is very distinctively one of the newer events, one of the into the storm or into the blizzard, where the police cars come up and slide up and yeah, stop. Yeah, they use that one about. a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's what I'm talking about. It does seem improved, because a lot of them have a lot more adjustments. Like, there's a Hummer that comes in, slides a bit differently. There's a ta uh, uh, Tacoma, oh, slides all the way through. They tweak um, the Crew 2 animations. Highlight of the playlist is a Chevrolet Chevelle that comes in a mile before you, <laughs> so the, the guy is so far off comes in slides and just eats shit into a wall <laughs> <laughs> that is the highlight of the playlist frankly um that one henchman just just absolutely ate it yeah um but uh, i i enjoyed that i enjoyed that a lot um but that is the hoonigan not hoonigan god damn it the uh it's because i'm holding the audi e-tron um the hoonigan not hoonigan Hawaii, playlist, Hollywood, whatever. But then the cars. We got the DB5 is the reward for the playlist. The Mini Cooper, that one's pretty good. That one is the requirement. It's the shop. It's year one pass. That one is the car from goddamn Mr. Bean. From goddamn the the Italian job. Uh, from this, real life as well. That too. Uh, debatable. Um, they also have the Ivory Tower Zeus, which is a brand new custom car they've made with a bunch of whatever's on it. It's done a bunch of things. You can't customize the wheels. I believe you can. I I I I swear I could have sworn you can. Maybe you can't. Maybe no, I'm you wrong. can't. You can't. You I can't. Could, I, I I feel we, like we, you could. We spoke about this when Did it was. We? Hang yes. on a minute. Hang on a minute. Because I, I want to say it was along the lines of how is it an ivory tower exclusive car that has no wheel customization options? How does that make any sense? I want to say they did add wheel customization. Because you want to bet? I hang on, 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 hang on. So this is, uh, is the moment. ivory tower Asus regular rims, okay? And then yeah, I there's like four stock wheel options you can use with different. Oh yeah, you can't make. But uh, that you can see clearly is different rims. Look at that! Look at that! Look! look yeah, look. because there's four stock options you can use. Oh, yeah, yeah, I suppose. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, you can customize them then. You just can't... Well, I'll take like the a... stupid, big, thin-looking <laughs> wheels off. You have to have... Oh, I've got these ones. These ones, but are slightly different. Whoa, uh, thank you, Ivory Tower. These are, thank these you. are pretty different. That's a car a... that requires zero licensing to add customization to it. They chose to add <laughs> zero. So, speaking of the customization, it does have some wild customization outside. It has body customization. You can't have wheels yeah. turn up. Nice, man. It's got some suspicious customization on the front, but I'll talk about that on the main channel, if anything. Um, uh, let, me, uh, let, me, uh, let me just say... That, uh, Germany-inspired. <laughs> Uh, it's rough. Uh, yeah, that thing has a bunch of uh, unique things to it, like startup animation when you launch the car, etc. But it's, it was just a bunch well, of stuff... Well, they can do it to the other cars, they just don't want to. That's what you mentioned. It's just stuff like... It's stuff that they could have done for any car, right? It just shows... Like, the, surely, yeah. now they have the template, they could just go, oh, for the Mercedes, when you start it up, it does this, but it shows the Mercedes logo. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, like the actual ones that real-life cars have, but um, I guess they just haven't. Um, the Ivory Tower Asus though It's cool until you get to the back of the car Then it's ugly uh, DB5 pretty good, DBS pretty good uh, DBS is a bit more whatever DB5 gets some good customization Then we have Black Panther Getting his own summit car The Black Panther Edition Skyline which we've seen a lot clearer In a trailer now um, That thing, pretty sick Doesn't come with a custom spoiler though it's it's a it's a it's a customized spoiler, but it's not a unique spoiler. Which people are like, oh damn, all right. They didn't give the guy who is known for spoilers a custom spoiler. Um, but that thing is going to be in the summit. Looks pretty cool. And the man's now canon in the game. Uh, Shmi's also in the game. Other cars include the 
like in Hypersport, that's coming out so far away from now. The, Thankfully, that car. <laughs> yeah. Uh, GR86, the Integra, Hon- the Honda Integra, the J- Jeep Gladiator, two Forsberg cars, the Forsberg Nissan Z, and the Forsberg Ultima. And I believe that's all uh, for uh, Talking you. about the Forsberg Z. Sure. They, I don't know what they were doing when they made so that. So the model of it, for some reason, is like They've seven different They've had almost ones. back-to-back absolute stinkers of car models recently. Yeah. Because the, the new one, that thing, is a... It's it's completely inaccurate. It's, the livery's miles off as well, which is the, so That's odd. the worst one, yeah. Livery is miles off, but on top of that... Um, They've it made also, it like sort of skinnier and stretched and i yeah so yeah it, it, the, the body doesn't match up with the body that it's supposed to have also it seems to just combine a bunch of different additions of the car so it's got the it's got like a carbon fiber front lip from one version of the car that version of the car does not have a fender vent they've also added a fender vent which is only on a car that doesn't have the front lip and then they've put all these different things the livery so far off Weird, really weird. Delivery is atrocious. I mean, yeah. you say weird. The Porsche nine five nine. We got last nine five nine. Yeah, is one of the worst three D <laughs> models of a vehicle I have ever seen. Yeah, it's, it's too narrow. It's too short. All the grill, all the vents are all miles off. Yeah. All the wheels are the wrong size. The mirrors are in the wrong place. The, all the vents are placed on the side. They're wrong. <laughs> side skirts are wrong. The windows mm. are too tall. There isn't anything right about that car, really, to be honest. <laughs> and the Force Bug Z is just doing a whole big weird for some reason. But I believe that concludes all the year one past cars added on is its the... own. The... The... Sure. Is it the... Shoot. The... Lotus. Lotus and Mira. Yeah, you're right. That one's also year one past. I thought I was missing one. Um, and then also... Amira, I, I, I hate that name, Miss Kim. I could not remember what it's called, the Amira. <laughs> Emira, Evora, Elytra, Evaya, Evija. The, what's the new one? The, the, the new sedan and the Emira just are one car in my head now, name wise. It might be Emira, I think. Emira, that's the one. It's Emira. Emira <laughs> and Emira are way too close. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, that is year one pass while the GR86, the Toyota GR86, is confirmed to be a shop added car getting added April, and that is where some issues begin. So we'll talk about a brand new feature that they're going to add. They are adding a legacy main stage thing first. Then we'll talk about the... Actually, what, what, what direction do I even go Where do we this? start? We'll go bad, good, bad. So all of, the, all of the things that they are adding are right at the start of the playlist, uh, of each main stage. At the beginning, yeah. we get the year one pass cards tomorrow. And then we get the playlist tomorrow. And then we get two returning crew cars tomorrow. And then we get uh, the main stage. The f- Obviously, the main stage comes tomorrow. And that's all day one, including, yeah, the two new shop cars and everything. The Ivory Tower is used tomorrow. Then we get the Legacy main stage. Then a Summit car at the end. So a-, a week with nothing when they could have added stuff. And then week two, we get the Integra. The Jeep Gladiator, the return of the Gordon Murray T50, the return of the Gordon Murray T50, but it's the racing one, the Land Rover Defender, and the GR86. Six cars plus the main stage returning car, which is going to be the Kaidu Edition 300ZX, all on the same day. Yep, yep. Their pacing of content is unbelievably bad. And then because of that, we get the legacy main stage the week after, so sure that brings back a car. Then nothing. Then we've got a week of nothing. Yep. Why would And there's no excuse for it. There is no excuse. Because they could have, at bare minimum, the crew two returning cars, they could have put those in that week. Yep. You don't even do yep. have to do anything new there. You could have just put the crew two returning cars on the it's third week because so there's actually odd. nothing that week. Actually I, nothing. There has to be a reason for it because they've done it for so long now. Yeah, they keep dumping it at the beginning. Like, did Into the Storm really do that well in the crew too? They, they were like, yeah, this well, is the, the worst format performing works. updates, player count wise. Yeah, like what? It just makes no sense. Or they it's just so don't upset. care. I guess. Like, they just keep dumping everything at the beginning. And then the next week after that, you get all the crew two cars and all the new cars. Day one. Then you get all the new cars and all the crew two cars. Day one on the last week as well. Yes, the summit cars at the very end. Legacy main stage. We'll talk about that nonsense. But god damn. 
Speaking of nonsense, first of all, the idea, pretty good. It fills up the pause menu. It brings back mainstay itch cards, I guess, in the same format of um, a playlist. So that's where the praise ends. Um, it's really boring. You're just doing events. There's I no. I suppose it's lines. meant to be though. Like, sure. It's, but it's just oh, you you didn't get this car. You can do yeah. this. But hear me out. Playing it, sure, that might be boring. No voice lines, whatever, because they're summit events, right? One reason that it's also boring at the moment is because none of the fun events have come back yet. Like the Infinite Nitro Summit, right? That'll be a fun one to have back because that's an event that now permanently in the game you can do with Infinite Nitrous, right? Yeah. All of the first three months were just cars from all over the world. I will say, at the end of playing, I played the Japanese one. By the end of it, I was like, you know what? I did feel like I was playing a whole thing based on Japanese whatevers. So the atmosphere was fine. Um, but... Hear me out. No other awards other than the car. These main stages had other awards. These main stages had clothing. Uh, These main stages had vanities. I don't want them to bring back the name tags because sure, those are supposed to be rare. But the vanities and the clothing and bucks, even bucks, they gave no other awards other than do the eight, get the car. Not a single other or award. Or the vanities and clothing. Uh -huh. What if they don't remember what was out those months or weeks? <laughs> Well, to be fair... Because there's... Could... I don't remember. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. But they could find out, right? If they cared enough, they could find could out. Could they? <laughs> go watch a Sid Wise video, right? They could go, they could go watch a Sid Wise video. They're right? not going to. They're not going to spend the time. Uh, they, sure, sure. No way they archived any of that information. I'm and they're not going to go out of their way to research it to put it in a stupid event. Ah, I'm sure they would. I'm sure they would. But th that just that's such a little thing that ruins it even more... That they should have had the vanities and everything return as well, especially the clothing. The clothing. Just, you just want that clothing. You want that. I just want the clothing. I just want the clothing. Um, but the vanities, right? Even though half the vanities were reran anyway, it'd be nice to have a permanent way in game to get them again, because they were also like the main stage. What are you doing? Um, also, I think that's it. Actually, I think. Oh, oh no. Last big thing. Way too early. They mentioned nostalgia in the reveal of this thing. Nostalgia for what? You've Three got to think ago? of the current audience. Yeah, you're telling Attention me span is sure, hooked. Sure, sure, sure. But you're telling me they've gained... Th they they gain that many players every six months? Like, you're, you're, you're telling no, me... That the, uh -huh. I don't think people play for six months and they come back and like, oh, I've missed a main stage car. I guess, I <laughs> guess. Right, sure. But... This would make so much more sense a year in. Six months in is way too early for what this is. I just don't but, think it... But maybe, maybe this game is in such of a state that it is, it is I mean. nostalgia. <laughs> maybe they are like, sure, sure, sure. Maybe they're like, um, they're, the players are that bad that they're like, yeah, no, no one's played for so long. So let's bloody, let's bring this back so that there's some pretend, uh, there's content every week, like every month, I guess. Because if you remove it's the Legacy Main Stage... Getting to the point where there's sub-1 mil crew Motorfest summits for Platinum. Yeah, yeah. Which um, means nobody is playing Main Stage if people aren't playing summits. Uh, sub-1 mil for the points is what you mean, not players. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's always sub-1 mil. Um, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you already own the car, you have... A new playlist at the start, two new cars to buy at the beginning, and two summit cars. One in the second month, one in the fourth month. That's the entire update for someone yeah. who actually plays the game. If you have played, it's the crew two, but worse, in my opinion. The crew <laughs> two was great for new players, and if you played a bit, there wasn't that much to do, but there were summits, they were fun, the new vanities were enjoyable. Mm. Sometimes. And there was, uh, it felt like there was more to do. Whereas with Motorfest, it feels like it is all focused on new players. Yeah. If you've yeah. played the game for more than four seconds, there is nothing to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's where we're stuck. It's where we're just fully screwed. And it does. Like, I own head in. them. Yeah. Sk um, yeah. <laughs> the crew two. I've got a bone to pick with them for the crew two. Skipping that many car summits is oh, screwing me over. Yeah, so they yeah, that's the crew two update. Because they, I'm only missing six cars now. One of them I'm never gonna be able to get, so thank you, Ivory Tower, thank you for that. <laughs> uh one of the one of them is one motor pass car, which is allegedly 
might return at some point. Yeah. Then the rest of Summit Cars. Yeah, yeah. Which, if they were running them in order, would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> but they just seem to have given up. They've mm. jumped, like, eight Summit Cars for some reason. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, what was I about? I... Uh, My rage for Ivory Crew Tower. Crew but bad. Bad. <laughs> this is Crew Tube but bad. Yeah, basically. Motor Fest is mm. great for new players, I imagine. Brilliant. Grind yeah. game, fun, grind, grind, money. If you have all the cars, yep. even the summits are pointless because all the vanities are Crew 2 rerun vanities. Yeah. Which, yeah. having played the Crew 2, <laughs> <laughs> makes, makes all of them waste of time. I'm genuinely... When we hit one year, I'm doing a, I'm doing a Rookie to Icon 1000. I, I have to. Custom show right. has better vanities, has better oh, sure. rewards yeah. Oh, than yeah. a normal summit. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, the I vanities suppose. are usually unique. Ah, uh, more I they're I'd more often, far. more often, sure, sure, more often than the, the summit, summit I which guess. makes no sense. Yeah, yeah. How? It's, yeah. <laughs> and they, custom show is irrelevant. It doesn't. It might as well not exist. Why does yeah. that get better legacy vanity main rewards? Legacy stage. I will say, legacy main stage is a good repurposing of content. Just not done amazingly. Uh, uh, as everything in the game usually is. There you go. Pretty good. Could have been done better. Um, other than that, I think that they're also... All of the main stage cards are reran. The first one being the Porsche Winter Agent. Which the first one makes the least sense to me. Because they have the Porsche Director's Cut Edition. But they're just putting that in the shop. Why is that not main stage? Why is that car not? I main think stage they're reward? afraid to make exclusive main stage rewards. You reckon because they just mm. I d I don't know how far in advance they're confirmed, but mm. how often have they been exclusive? Twice? Yeah, well the first one oh wait, yeah, the first one was always first exclusive. one Hoonigan. Uh first one of Hoonigan and first one of um uh, yeah. the first one. I don't think we're gonna see many exclusives from now on. I was I think they the can see that the, the the play counts for the main stage completion are so low yeah. that no one's getting them. And, and then mean... people are complaining that they haven't gotten them. Yeah. That's why they're bringing this out so early. Because if you hop on to play the weekly content, that isn't enough to get you to level three in the main stage. Yeah, yeah. No one is doing. No one is playing the game enough to get the rewards. It should have been the director's cut edition. It should yeah, have no, been. They should add exclusive rewards to, especially if they're rerunning them. Make yeah. them exclusive, so you get like six months early access to these cars. But no. no. Oh, to be fair, there's two new Summit cars actually. Only one of them is reran out of the four months. But yeah, I just. It's not the four GT <laughs> four GT interception units. So yeah, yeah, either. the one you're missing that they skipped right over. They were, I was, can't believe that. That was the next one. That was the next one. You know Summit Coda. What were the Summit cars after? Four GT interception. Four GT gold uh, Mazda RX-8. The Hummer HX Concept. Then something else. Oh, Emerald Edition uh, Devo. Then it would have been the AGC. I own all the cars after that, I think. Yeah, then it yeah. would have been Winter Agent. Then it would have been uh, Agent Edition. I'm missing mm -hmm. 4GT Inception Unit, the F1 car, the Gold RX3 thing, the... I can see it. I don't know, the, the RX3. R34. R34, R34 Gold. Gold uh, Dragon, Lucky Dragon, and the RX3. And then Forceback, yeah. Yeah, and it. then the Forceback 350, which is coming back in main stage. <sighs> I've never seen it. If, I'm so annoyed. They, they better rerun that 4GT interception unit. They better. <laughs> or it better become main stage. Otherwise, I'm not going to be out. Because I've not well, seen that for what, at least... A year and a bit, if they yeah, don't if, rerun it. If they're continuing the cycle from this, then yeah, yeah, it's you're never seeing that car again, really. Um, but <laughs> the game will shut down by the time that thing's gonna come back. Um, but... They'll skip over it again, and it'll re release the releasing the week after the game shuts down. I guarantee it. They yeah. don't want me to have that car. <laughs> oh god. Um, but I believe that's it for the crew motor fest. And tell you what, we'll consider it the gaming segment. The Forza doing nothing of relevance. Need for Speed, doing a lot of doing a lot of getting feedback. Like a lot of Black Panther did say, they seem like the most direct to the audience right now. Where they've just sort of been going in the Discord. They addressed the Toyota stuff. Like I mean, they've you, just been like you a, say that the Crew Motor Fest has an official uh, feedback, feedback thing, thing yeah, in the Discord yeah. now. So. But I mean, 
Motorfest still feels like a company doing that, though, right? Um, Need for Speed really feels like yeah, the 30 they put, people they that it is. Yeah, they put all the feedback in the shredder over every time. Yeah. Exactly, right. Uh, the Need for Speed feels like the 30 people that it is. It feels like them just going, all right, yeah, what do they want, I suppose because the there's not 8 million tiers of management to go through exactly. to get to the feedback, it's easier for them to interact with the community about the feedback they have received. That's exactly what it is, right? That's what it feels like. And then Forza's obviously the opposite end where they're just up in the, they're up in the clouds. Um, but... You yeah, have no idea what's going on. They walk in like, feedback? What? Yeah. New what? Well, Forza is currently in what month are they in? Oh, is it second? It's on the tip of my tongue. That's the week. What month? What is the month? What's the overarching month? I need to actually I'm... play Forza as well, by the way. Or I'm gonna miss that RS6. Forza in so long. The RS6 is the rewards. You are playing before Thursday. European. That's what it is. It's you a have European... to play it tomorrow. Now that I think about it. Ah, uh, there's two other weeks, but I will. I will. Yeah. Um. European is the is the month of it. By the way, I'm getting my videos done tonight, so yeah, and I'm not streaming tomorrow, so I'm, I'm fine to do that. Um, uh, it's like European Legends, something like that. Whatever. Um, Gran Turismo, nothing. Nothing, nothing new. Yeah, nothing no. CarX, nothing, nothing. No, test Drive, nothing since the trailer, I guess. Would be, is there a point mention in TDU? We're not going to see anything for another four months. I, 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 I'll have you know, they have a good... 19 days still they, they still have 19 days <laughs> the game could release they haven't finished dust yet so i don't think it's coming out in 14 <laughs> days or whatever it was uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> f1 has had so much oh drama. too much to remember at this point <laughs> Five page. I don't know what's real, what's fake. So what, helmet uh, was gonna leave. What helmet's he wasn't about nowadays? Leave. So yeah. he was gonna leave, then he wasn't. Then apparently he was doing an interview with some Australian journalists and said to them, "Ask me about my potential suspension, etc." Um. So clearly he loves making going on drama. There. Like he exists solely as a drama generating machine. Someone else is gonna be um booted off right as well. Uh, Christian so, Horner's getting fired at least once a day at this point. Yeah, like, I Horner don't know. Potentially fired. Uh, they let a toddler onto the racetrack. <laughs> so, for clearly Ferrari poisoned um poisoned uh Alonso. Maybe helmet poisoned. If Alonso is racing for Ferrari, what's the big news? Yeah, yeah. Oh, not Ferrari, no. Signs, that's what I meant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ferrari poisoned signs. Let a toddler on the track to be like, ah, we really don't need you. Um, He did well, overtook like, what, four people on a track you're not supposed yeah. to be able to overtake on? Um, Terrible track. I hate this track, by the way. I don't know why it's still on the calendar. <laughs> I mean, most people say that, though, right? About but... every track, yeah, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> no one likes any of the tracks at this yeah. point. Um, car's getting too big. There's a track that goes all the way up into 50 stories up or whatever. Oh, what? and people were, drivers were getting paid to promote that. It's so funny. <laughs> uh, because they're not PR people, they don't know how to do the hashtag ad, so they're just doing non disclosed ads. Which is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Alonso mogged, but I think that might have been a while ago. <laughs> Alonso mogged. Who's he mogged this time? What's going on? He did mogging. He did the like, he did the shush in the, and the, oh, yeah, thing. yeah. Um, Oh God! Verstappen's dad wants him to go to uh, wants him to move to Mercedes. Allegedly. Yeah. I, none of these is <laughs> none of it's confirmed. It's just like someone heard someone that said someone said something, and it's all just like. What is it? Is it Alonso Ferrari or Alonso Red Bull? It's Alonso Red Bull, right? Well, uh, it, to how many helmet doesn't want Alonso there? And it was going to be if helmet leaves, Alonso would be a good candidate. If Perez leaves his seat but like what <laughs> but helmet's not leaving but yeah, and then and apparently why perez? what's his name perez Horner. Apparently, that... then apparently Horner was then leaving but now oh. Horner's not leaving but now apparently yeah. according to today he is leaving <laughs> I, 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 I don't think anyone knows what's going on over no, let's it's make it all up for the, the fun place. of it even i know about it is how much all over the place it is there is so much drama going on in f1 surely drive to survive are having the time of their life right now uh, yeah yeah they got pretty eight million pieces of film crew running all over the paddock at the minute i imagine <laughs> they've probably got a mic set up on helmet's phone at this point just like so you can tell if it is sleep and they can tweet it but what other drama is there what other what other big dramas <sighs> going on 
I'd say not a lot. None that I can remember. Sure. I I, I know I put stuff in the chat. But, well, because Did you? From, from moving to that, Audi has confirmed. Oh, Audi's that... buying 100% of Sauber, yeah. Yeah, so talk about that. What's going on there? What What's happening? Well, they were what happening? buying a majority share. Yeah. But so I think they could see more. how far in the bin Sauber have gone. So they're just <laughs> buying 100% so they can have full control. So Sauber is... Kick. Kick, which was Alfa Romeo. Yeah. How long were they Alfa Romeo for? Two years. Oh, okay, not that long then, I guess. Um, no. And then... Essentially, Sauber is the team... But they sell team name rights to uh, other companies. But Audi this time around is just straight up buying them. So what yes. does Sauber do other than F1? What are they? What are they? Oh, are as they far playing? as I'm aware, nothing. Oh, okay, interesting. They're one of those we exist to do one thing kind of companies, and huh? They're profit the, the official. Kind of they own the official F1 wind tunnel, like the one that ah. they F, like F1, the company you use to test upcoming cars and stuff like that. That's how they get their margins back to zero from red. I guess. Like they have some of the, but they have some of the best facilities on the grid by a mile. Okay. Yeah. That they can't make a good car. <laughs> that makes sense though. That's where they make their money. All right, that's kind of cool having the the engineer on the track. I guess the engineer facilitator on the track. Um. And yeah, they're going to become Audi now. They're going to be Audi yep. in 2026. Um, and Audi... I don't know how long for. I've got a feeling Audi are going to sell quite quickly. Mm. Oh, you reckon? Do you reckon they're not going to yeah. stay in F1? I reckon I they don't think promote... there's a way they're going to get a car competitive. <sighs> I reckon they, they are it. going to have to use a customer engine, I imagine, unless they're going to whip one up in a year and a half, which... Sure. Uh... I reckon they need to be... They don't have any aerodynamicists. <sighs> yeah, yeah. I don't know, Hoonigan. <laughs> Hire them, you know? They they made the e-tron. <laughs> yeah, make the e-tron, the Hoonatron thing, just run that around the track. Yeah, right? right? Have that versus the uh the F1 cars, you know? It can to do a dr- get to a level where they are competitive, they will have to dump obscene amounts of money into well, the Well presumably they're starting at where Sauber is, right? Sauber Sauber. Sauber I Sauber. would sub if I worked for Sauber. Yeah, Sauber. They're they're already starting where Sauber is, right? Not great, so, yeah. Sure, sure. Well, you know what? It's spelled Sorba, so I don't want to hear it from you. It's S-U-B-E-R, all right? That says Sorba. So <laughs> I'm, I'm not having it. Um, but... Can you pronounce it Audi, son? With ha- true. With how they are making a livery, I feel like they're doing it to promote their new cars, right? Oh, yeah, no. It is purely marketing. Yeah. It's the same reason... Well, Renault, the Renault F1 team, is branded Alpine at the minute. Yeah. It's yeah. just solely, we can get the Alpine name on TV. So were they Renault before? Yeah. They oh, still are yeah. Renault. Like, the engine is a Renault yeah, yeah, engine obviously, that they yeah. use. As in, like, name-wise. Yeah. So, Audi, especially, yeah, with the livery that they're putting on, the livery is just the Audi e-tron livery. I don't think they... they're going to use that livery. Do you not? I feel like it's they It's such would. an old concept image for the F1 car. That's like three years old now. Is it? Oh, but you say that they've just used this same livery. They used it on the e-tron. And they just used this same livery on their wagon um, e-tron. I the think RSS they're GC. going to use it to promote a car. The, the most current tier car they want you to buy. It's going to be based on a special edition livery of that. Like they'll make a one-off. They did. They did just make an Audi e-tron GT. Uh, uh, sorry, Audi RS5. RS6. They did make an RS6 GT, which has this livery. And if I go right now, Audi e-tron, right? And I scroll down, a special edition, right? See, it's coming up with a damn SUV. Um, Audi e-tron. <laughs> e-tron GT is special, the sedan. Okay, Audi e-tron GT special edition, right? Well, would you look... Oh, hang on. Hang on a minute. It's it's loading. Would you look at that? It's the exact same livery style. I'm just saying yeah. it's gonna be... Or they do have a blue version, I suppose. But, again, if we consider this one, which looks even closer, if anything, if we consider this one, and we consider this one... And then we also chuck into the mix that they just made an Audi RS6 GT with this version, the red version. I do feel like it's going to look like that with brand sponsorships and everything. Which, to be fair, I think this livery is cool. So I'm fine with it. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they're going to stick around for long. 
<laughs> I'm hoping they do, at least. I'm, I'm hoping they do. Especially now that I know F1, all right? So that one viewer who keeps saying that the motorsport segment is just Josh talking and me going, huh? They yeah. don't. Huh? You're wrong, all right? You're wrong. I talk. I time. can't see how they're going to be competitive is the issue. They have... I think they Yes, they have what... great facilities. Yeah. But... If your staff don't know how to use those facilities <laughs> to the best of their ability, is there a point having those facilities? I reckon they use that Audi money to use those facilities in the right way. Like, they're right? not going to clone Agent Nui, are they? So. Sure, sure. But I feel like they use the e-tron money to now make good facilities, right? I, I reckon they use that. They inject There's only that so many staff, money. though. And when every other team... Now, rip to are the Are Audi going to want to dump? Like, Red Bull can pay members you know of what? staff. Anything they want. Sure, sure. We'll know. We will know the moment they start, really, how long they're going to be around. Because if they dump a bunch of money into it, it's likely they're going to be around for a little while. But they're is... not mm. They're not going to want to be at the back of the grid. I'll tell you that. Exactly, right? And the moment they are... Two years at the back of the grid, I think, is going to be their limit before it <laughs> goes, this is going to be embarrassing. <laughs> but I reckon even, like, what, at the bottom of the ones everyone knows, right, Ferrari, Mercedes, Red Bull, even at, like, the... McLaren, even if they're like like at the back of that pack, I feel like even that's a win, right? Because you're in the conversation. They're not. They're not going to be at the back of that pack. As long as they are not slower than Haas, than Alvatari. You can't be slower than a Haas. Then Williams, not in a straight line. Then. Well, Williams ain't even quick in a straight line. Which is a bad. Are they not? Oh god damn it! No. <laughs> as long as they're faster than those three with a good livery. I reckon they're in the conversation. And that would be enough, I reckon. Well, they ain't going to be in the conversation for points, but yeah. <laughs> sure. I mean, um, that takes away another team that don't sell IRL products. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because yeah. it's going to be Audi-owned now. Yeah, So yeah. What have you, who have you got left? you got has sell real products. Yeah. William. Alpha. Williams are the only team that do not produce a Williams-based <laughs> product. Damn. Okay. So, Matt retired. And I guarantee you, Drilton Investments, yeah. or whatever they're called, are going to want to dump them ASAP. They have made a fortune on that well, team. Well, Williams don't have... Williams don't have the, ch the the amount they can charge to all the other companies as well in the in the form of um, testing equipment. So, ooh, um <laughs> But yeah, you know what? Good on Audi. Uh, and I reckon I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Honestly, when are we going to get a Citroen F1 team? I, think I forget I... Citroen run Formula E, like have Formula oh, yeah, E cars. Yeah. I always forget that. <laughs> I look my funny ha Citroen and F1 joke, but no, they actually do have a Formula E team. Like, sure. What I think it is, is that you in a motorsport segment or me in a motorsport segment, it's whether it's race week. It's not race week, meaning it's all drama, meaning it's all stuff I've seen on TikTok. There was a so race. Invested in it. Oh, was there? Yeah. Was it the second race? Was it, when did it that was happen? second race, correct. Yeah, who, who won? <laughs> uh, who won? I, I, wonder, I really wonder who won. <laughs> Sorry. When I say who won, I mean who came second. <laughs> yes. Uh, was it Perez? Yes. <laughs> oh, <for God's> <laughs> there's no point. Like, there's no point oh, rattling off the top three because it's going to be Verstappen, Perez, Leclerc, or Verstappen, Perez, Hamilton, or Verstappen, Perez, Russell, or... Yeah, yeah. There's just no point at this <laughs> stage. Yeah, it's rough. <laughs> um, but what is there going on in the world of uh, MotoGP and WEC? There was a WEC race as well, right? There was a WEC race, but... Did you not catch it? I think it, I think it was a bit too long ago for my memory to have stored that one. Was it? Uh, I swear it was racing. Uh... WEC looks cool, man. I like WEC. No, the last race was the Peugeot killing itself. Oh, was Wasn't it? That... Okay. Huh. I'm pretty Peugeot sure it was. Up. What about MotoGP? What are they what are they doing? Oh, that was that was th two days ago, I've forgotten. Uh it's pretty much same standings as last year, really. Same as in F1. KTM wow. have made a leap forward. A pretty looked like they've made a leap forward <laughs> until they I don't know, forgot how to work the bike. Yeah. The issue is, Ducati are too far gone, really, in the yeah. up the road to for anyone to catch up, really. That is the KTM's have such an unbelievably good launch. <laughs> I I don't know because basically off the start, 
they gained four four positions, four or five positions just off start a line because yeah. the way the bikes work nowadays, it's not based on oh, I've got to throttle, let off the clutch, not wheelie really the bike. Like the front suspension locks down like that, and they've got like electronically low rears when you're stopped, so it's basically on the ground like a drag bike. Yeah. And then KTM have a thing where they the riders dump the clutch and it electronically varies the clutch so they don't have to do anything. It just bites points itself and it's it's stupid. They accelerate zero to sixty in under two seconds. <laughs> Chill. Like faster than F one car. It's, it's ridiculous a, how quick they've gone. Slower than a Tesla Roadster. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, Z- I forget they've all got really European names. <laughs> Zarko. Yeah, I'm gonna to need to search that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. Because I, Martin, it's Martin. I always sure. I get him and Zarko. I don't know how I get him and Zarko that mixed up. Zarko rides for Honda now. Yeah. They were teammates okay, last year. Okay. Sure. I think is yeah. But essentially, Martin won the sprint as he always does because he is a sprint race machine somehow. Mm. Uh. Aspargo came second, or Binder third, one of the way around. It was a sprint. There's no results for that. I can't find. Mm. Full race was Banyaya, Binder, Martin. The, the, the KTM's are too good. The, the, KTM, <laughs> the, the Caddies are too good. Oh, wait, KTM's Red Bull as well, isn't it? Yeah, they race it. Red Bull livery, but they have non Red Bull branded KTM's in the race. Okay, okay, right. They well, have they two the teams. Three, they have right? the KTM Red Bull team, and then tech, tech and then the Gas Gas team, which oh, is a Gas sure. Gas is a KTM owned brand that, like Alpine, how Renault are Alpine. Well, they have just, a Gas Gas branded. It's, one. it's funny to see two Red Bull liveries dominating two separate motorsports. <laughs> that's that's as funny. Well, as the is. issue is it's it's a Ducati branded bike dominating at the minute. Ah, it's not the Red Bull. A one. Ducati will win the world championship. Yeah. It just depends whether it's Martin or Banyaya. Oh, Ducati. Marquez, sorry, not Casey. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. KTM. Yeah. Marquez will be up there. I think I'm gonna guess third or fourth in the championship at the end of the year. Oh. Because he rides that bike, uh, he will crash it at some point. So in the, in the next race or the race after, that is going straight into a gravel trap. Um, he, well, yeah. He rides it like it's the Honda. Like he will dive in under the like You're so aggressively on people, the, uh, and you can what? see how the like he almost on on the race of the weekend. He almost dropped it twice. He almost dropped it on braking and then dropped it on acceleration. Which I mean. <sighs> It's going to take a while to get used to it, I think. I'm saying by race... I'll have a podium by race four. Consistent podiums by... Race... Yeah, right, but after race seven onwards, consistent podiums. But yeah, I think it's going to be a copy-paste of last year. It's going to be a battle of Ducati for championship. The, the Aprilia's... Uh, I can't see them being good on a... Uh, oh, hello, I'm disconnected. Can't see the Aprilia's being good on anything other than twisty tracks. And even then, it's going to require a bit of luck to get a podium out of one of those. The Japanese brands are in the bin. Honda have made a slight improvement. A slight as being a second off the pace of everyone else as you can be, really. But yeah. Exactly the same as last season, I think. And then British Touring Car starts in April, mid-April, I think. So nothing until then. I'm you sure have to cut out that bit of science at the end. There. Yeah, I, there's only so much waffle I can come up with. <laughs> well, that is about it for this episode of the Stick Drift Podcast. Look out for the Black Panther episode coming into your inbox very, very soon. Like we say, like the podcast. There's a little review thing you can do on Spotify where you can, like, it gives you like a prompt to be like, what did you think of the episode? Go ahead and put some in there, you know? Maybe I'll read some. Um, and eventually, you know what? Maybe we'll have like a people... There's a, there's a podcast that I listen to. They have a segment where people like send stuff in, right? They, or like they, they... What I might do is a... It, how do I pitch it? Philip DeFranco does a Yesterday Today segment where he goes through the comments of the opinions of the stories of the last episode. I may prompt you guys way more to leave opinions on the stories and 
I don't know, last week, this week, Summit, Summit, some kind of thing, some with some name, have a segment in the podcast where we go through what you the guys... Future is, of, uh... the, 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 the past is now, I don't know. Yeah, Summit, Summit, you know what? And it's got... And maybe it'll Summit Inspiration. Yeah, yeah, that too, that too. Um, but uh, yeah, with that, we'll have uh, probably a segment where we read out your guys' opinions on the specific stories. And... Um, Coincidentally, it, imp- <laughs> it uh, entices engagement. Um, we'll see you boys in the next one. That's about it from us in a bit. <laughs>